Hey, welcome back to my shop. Um, my name is Doug. It's the Metalworks Machine Shop. This is going to be a shop update video from things I've purchased over the last year. Hang in there. I'll try to make this as short as I can, but I think you'll like some of the stuff that I've I picked over picked up over the last year. All right, purchase number one. Uh, picked this up at a garage sale. It's a knack box. It's a, like a job box. Um, paid twenty dollars for it. Pretty rough. It had one of the drawers in it broke, so I cut it out because I went to price a new track from knack <laughs> and no it's like like two hundred dollars for a new uh, drawer track so i cut it out it does have a drawer over here we'll be getting into that here in a second but yeah really good purchase rolls around nice it locks everything works on it just had a broken drawer so okay next purchase is this uh two foot by three foot uh cast iron uh surface plate i got this from a company that went out of business or sold and then a friend of mine bought that business and bought all the contents uh, this was covered in uh lead that's what they used for their, instead of putting the bluing down and stuff, they use lead. Maybe where you get lead powder and you mix like a real heavy, uh, like a gear oil or something with it. And then that makes your paste and then you rub that in. And then, because we did it on this, we checked this for flatness. He has straight edges. I mean, he had all kinds of stuff. I'm not done buying from him yet. There's a few pieces I'd like to get. That they don't really use too much but um i mean it's been scraped it it's got some staining on it i don't know that light's kind of crazy but i got found that at a garage sale and clamped that on there it's, it, i mean it's got a little staining on it but uh when we checked it the low spot and it's like under a half a thousandth is right in this area right here what they did was it basically never got used as a surface plate it had a jig that bolted down on it and then and it held like a gib or something that they maintenance presses like uh, the straight sides or the gap presses and stuff like that they they were a scraping company so this held a jig which held the part that they scraped so okay now inside the knack box in the one drawer that works you know, and then like there i cut that one out but that basically stores there's my big pongren pongren vise that's a eight inch vise that's adjustable yeah, and then got a few other things in there keep welding rods and wd-40 stuff in there and, and over here it's I haven't put my uh, rotary table back in there yet, but I store that there. But anyways, back to this drawer. Also picked this up from the same company that I got this from. Let me see here. Got this uh, Pratt & Whitney. Uh, precision level my hands are a little dirty I've been moving stuff around but um, this is a half thousandths per foot that's nice little find he actually had three or four or five of these uh, different. This was the only Pratt Whitney that they had. So, and I got a really good deal on it too. And this being a scraping company, this is this has been scraped and we checked it before I bought it. 
They scrape this thing dead flat. I think it's this table's dirty. I need it needs cleaned because it's hinging out here and, and it's hinging about right here. And it's hinging about right there. So it's it's pretty darn flat. Like I said, it'd be good for anything that I ever need it for. Well, one of you probably just saw uh, DJ's video, um, the Foxburg's fabric cobbling, when he was over in my shop last weekend. You know, he granted me one of these out of the, his huge collection that he had. I Thank you very much. I'll put it to use sometime at some point. Well, I finally found one. Got me a tool post grinder. I actually found several, but nothing that would fit my lathe well enough. So this is for 15 or a 14 to 16 inch lathe. Okay, I just changed the settings on my on how much light's going into my lens. You can see a little better here. But I've already had it on the tool post and it lines up about perfect with my lathe. I need to put a new mesh filter in here. It's got like the, the wired mesh filter for there's where you like keep it oiled or whatever for any of the debris or anything that gets into the motor it will catch it there and then you take those out and you clean it out or replace it um, got another oiler here uh, spins real nice um, I do have three spindles I actually found one in an auction and paid like nothing for it let me set you down here these are the uh, oh, what do you call them uh, do more these are the do more do more spindles this one was sitting in some water I think this is the one that I gave nothing for it but it needs I think it needs bearings you can kind of hear them but there is no oil i drained the oil out and put fresh in and i would probably try it to, to get real critical on the part yeah it needs new bearings but it seems seems to spin real nice but these are all do more spindles now i'll put this over on the lathe real quick and take a peek at it all righty I got that on there. It took me about 10 minutes to kind of assemble it roughly. I mean, but there she is. I'm going to go ahead and take take this stone off. I'm going to fire it up. I haven't had it on in forever. So. And I'd, I wouldn't spin that stone anyways. I don't trust it. Thing's been setting in water and everything is probably oh you get banned at a basketball did you yeah. well these are the only ones that are really wide open besides those ones but they're like 15 bucks this is only eight. oh look at there bandit Woo! what do you got oh hell you moved up to spalding not Chineseium generic. Right. Oh, they were only eight dollars. They were at Marshall's. Yeah, there you go, basketball star. Can't get your beak on that one for a while, can you?
Where's your other one? Oh, there it is. It's over there laying in the... Alright, I got the stone off and whatnot. Got the uh after I got I had to go out there and video band of getting his new basketball. He'll have that about a month before he shreds it. He'll figure out a way of getting his jaws around it. But I don't know too much about this belt. It's really not tight, it's basically motor weight on it. But I do have this tight and this is lefty tighty righty what is it? lefty tighty righty loosey it's not the normal righty tighty lefty loosey so it's a left hand thread that's a right hand thread Pretty fast. That's a lot of RPM. That's probably 3,200 or so or something like that. I never really paid attention. But there it is. It's maybe someday I'll have a use for it. I like to do my uh, cylinder square that I made with it over here. Got this piece of DOM tubing, three-eighths thick, uh, about eight inches tall. And I turned it, turned it on my lathe and it's out of thousandths of an inch. Another acquisition is uh, got the uh, prime weld TIG welder. Um, I like it. It's the uh, TIG 225. I'm going to do a uh, tutorial uh, video or a, like a box opening thing, you know, so I haven't had it on the channel yet. I'm still working on that video. So every time I do something, I learn a little more and then I get, you know, so I'm going to wait till I, I learn all the knobs and everything, which really it looks intimidating but it's not because if you're just using mild steel you're you don't hardly need any of that but yeah that was a hell of a deal on this one so there'll be more upcoming videos using the the prime weld and about this last summer about this time i guess fall it is fall time now. It's October. So, uh, it's a, a Komatsu. Um, I guess they call it. it it's like 3,500 pound. But it, it, I've had, I've picked up over 4,000 pounds with it. Uh, I put a set of six foot forks on it for moving sheet metal and stuff like that. It's just easier for me. I've always, all my forklifts I've ever owned, <clears throat> I've had six foot forks just because I think they're easier to use and carry stuff instead of those little 42 inch hunks of junk or 48s, hate those things. But, you know, six foot, but you, re you need to relearn how to drive with forks that long. Otherwise, you'd just be wiping everything out. You either stab something or you'll hit something with the bump, you know, the rear when you turn. But that little forklift actually picked this K&T up. It didn't like it, but I could roll with it. I don't think I, I could, I could lift it. It's 3,500 pound, <clears throat> sorry. It's 3,500 pound lift in 24 inches. So... From, from the mast out 24 inches, it can handle 3,500 pounds easy, lifted up. This is also free lift, what they call free lift. It doesn't have the big cylinder in the front where the first stage goes, starts going up as soon as your forks go up. You know, the cage carriage doesn't go up with it. These forks will actually go uh, about five and a half, six feet 
before that mast will start going up. And I believe this is, yeah, this is a three stage. So it'll go 14 feet, but these forks will go all the way up. The top of the fork will go all the way up to about here. So fork height, it'll lift something to load it on a, on a pickup truck or in a bed of a truck or on a semi-trailer. It'll, it'll lift that high before any of the carriage goes up. That's what it's what's called a free lift. And here's my final tool purchase of uh, 2020 and 2021 was Biax scraper. I mean, this is one of the things I talked about earlier in a video. I, I bought a bunch of stuff I don't know if I would ever use, but the price was right. So I bought it. You never know, but it is I've been told by a couple people that this is basically just a scraper. Uh, I believe this is a tool for flaking, I think. I don't remember. See, that's how much I know about them. Maybe you all know. But I think this is the flaking tool. But this scraper won't flake. It's not set up to flake. So. I don't know. I have used, or I've had a piece of cast iron plate. And I played around on it for a while. But I got gave you know, a really good deal. Uh, this also came from the same place where I got my cast iron plate and that uh, precision level. So uh, maybe that handle grip is supposed to be a little tired, but yep, yeah, I don't know if I'll ever use it. Don't know if I'll ever have the nerve to try to do a video on it. I don't know anything about it. I, have, I am not a scraper person. So I basically bought it just to have it. Maybe someday I might, you know, take one of the classes or something. <clears throat> but, but, yeah. But that's about, that's about all I know about it. You know, I would love to learn how to scrape, but, you know, if I don't, you know, I don't, if I do, I have this thing. All right, guys, thanks for watching. You know, hit that subscribe button for me if you haven't. Uh, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, doesn't matter to me. Uh, leave a comment. I read all the comments and I reply to all of them. I try to. Um, okay, we'll see you in the next video.